I'm Jake, and this is my Zenith Stoll CH750. This is the Zenith Stoll CH750, a kit-built airplane first produced in 2008. The airplane is all metal and designed for peak performance off the runway. The Zenith 750 is capable of takeoff and landing distances just over 100 feet, thanks to its high lift wing, flaperons, and leading edge slot. The two place cabin features plenty of shoulder room and great visibility. Now let's go talk to Jake and learn more about his Zenith 750. So, what got me into aviation is. Um, my parents actually bought this place that we're living at, staying out here uh, in 1995. The original owners were Delta airline pilots. So they made a runway and we just stuck cows on it for I don't know how many years, but then uh, I kind of grew up flying RC planes, building RC planes with my stepdad. From there, I, I kind of decided I wanted to be a pilot. Just didn't have the funds at the time. Was able to do a couple businesses, sold the last one and uh, really, turned my hobby into something I wanted to do the rest of my life. So uh, bought this little plane here and uh, took it, just kind of going the rest of the way with that. I do want to be a commercial pilot. Um, I just crossed over 200 hours, so I'm very new still. I've been flying for a little over two years now. I do want to be a commercial pilot. Uh, not 100% sure on what I want to do yet with that commercial license. Uh, a lot of people go the CFI route. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd want to do that. There's plenty of opportunity out there and. Hopefully I can get my foot in the door somewhere and, uh, and make something happen for me. I actually went to a stole competition in Gainesville and I really enjoyed the planes out there, um, seeing them take off and a Steve Henry out there who can do it in six feet. Um, seeing that, it looked really safe to me. Not so much on final when they're going really slow, but uh, th just the planes themselves, I loved it. I've always been a tinker. I've got cars, I like, I like building stuff. I wanted a plane in the experimental category, that something I could work on, something I could, you know, really put my head in and kind of figure out, you know, how to get the best performance. I'm already looking at putting a turbo on this plane. So yeah, I just, I really liked that aspect of the short takeoff, short landing side of aviation and, and flying. We're right next to the Red River. I plan on going up there and kind of cruising the river a little bit and seeing the sights around here. It's slow plane but great visibility off the ground really quick, can come into pretty much anything. Lots of grass strips around here, so it's a, it's a lot of fun flying this plane. This is a Zenith Stoll CH750. It's made by Zenith, it's a kit-built aircraft. It was built by a man in Canada in 2010, bought by a gentleman here in Texas in 2014. He ended up passing away, and that's how I came into it. I bought it from a fellow in, in Denton, Texas, actually, and, and flew it back here in my house. It did come with a Jabru 3300, and that's a 120 horsepower rated six cylinder, horizontally opposed, like a normal aircraft engine. I was having issues with the back two cylinders running hot, so I wanted something liquid cooled that could handle the heat here in Texas during the summer. Was looking into a bunch of different engines. It was either between the Rotax or just some other variant. Actually found this engine by a gentleman in Florida. His name's Jan Egenfellner, and he owns Viking aircraft engines and so they do conversions on honda and gm engines small engines to put them in the plane so he tunes the ecu sends a you know he makes the mounts to make it uh, you know fit on the plane uh, this is not the first one on this aircraft. There's actually one in, in Denton as well. I was able to kind of just copy another build and stick it on there, uh, install the fuel system and, uh, and really just start testing. But yeah, it does have a gear reduction box on it. The engine is spinning around 5,000 RPM. So it's like a Rotax really, but it's very fuel efficient. It's a GDI, so direct injected. ECU's handling everything. I don't have to mess with mixture or anything like that. The ECU solves it all. So with this setup, I'm getting around four gallons per hour uh, and it runs on 89 octane. So I have to go to a gas pump to fill up. I carry a fuel bag in here just in case if I like want to go to an airport and they don't have, you know, mo gas. I got to take a crew car and fill up a fuel bag and then fill it up. So it's an interesting little thing. It requires a little bit more cross country planning, but for the efficiency of it, it's like $20 an hour to fly this plane. So it's a very efficient plane, not going there fast, like I said, but it, it is a fun plane to fly. So performance wise, uh, this plane, we cruise right around 90 
miles per hour indicated. You know, ground speed can vary. Uh, I'm usually seeing 80 miles per hour, but I'm pulling pow power back and I'm trying to get the best fuel burn that I can. Can cruise at 4,700 RPM and you can kind of get there quicker, 100 miles an hour across the ground, but that all depends on the wind. This plane has a high lift, high drag wing, so you're not going fast no matter what you do, no matter how much power you're making. I'd say 90 miles per hour across the ground is usually the, the go-to. Um, it does have similar performance to a 152. It does climb way better. It you know weighs you know, a couple hundred pounds less. With this being experimental, I am allowed to do the maintenance. I'm allowed to make any changes I want with that special airworthiness certificate. It's really weird because I, I don't like flying other planes after flying this. I get in a 152 and in the summer you're getting you know maybe 400 feet per minute and no matter what i'm getting close to a thousand feet per minute climbing this thing so i just like to give a shout out to a couple people that have helped me get this engine in there there's a man darren towers who has a Zena stole 750 as well with the same engine he sent me a lot of information checklists also jan eggenfellner and Alyssa eggenfellner in florida they answered all my emails if i had any questions and one more dave telema he actually came up here flew from houston in his plane and gave me a ride in his plane so i it was it, you know that was the solidifier for me when he flew me i was like yeah this engine is something he's got a little over a thousand hours on it it's dave Thalema, darren towers and the eggenfellners they really helped me out and i just want to give them credit you ready to go fly i'm ready to go fly let's do it let's All go right. clear <laughs> I want to make sure the flaps come down all the way and then back up. Yeah, those really are unique flaps there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's really cool because, like, when you're going really slow, slow flight, you don't get mushy controls. Like, you still have really good control. Wow. Cool. I usually wait until oil is 100 degrees before I start moving. Okay. And it takes a while. Even when it's 100 degrees out. It... Yeah, show it off on takeoff landing. We'll go do stalls and then come back. All right, cool. All right, we're over 100 degrees, so oh. we can taxi out. Usually I do my uh, takeoff roll right at the gate. Okay. Uh, and oh. uh, how much length do you have? Uh, this is like 2,200 feet. Okay, cool. Well, so you got quite a bit of space. Yeah, we won't even be close to it. I land on the other side when the winds are from the north. On takeoff, I'm going to go full power, brakes held. I'm going to release the brakes. I'll get the nose wheel off the ground, and then we're just going to wait till it comes off the ground. Cool. Run up, I just get it over 2,000 RPM, usually 2,700, everything on for takeoff. And that's about it. There's no car beat, no mixture, so. All right. Oh my God, there's a beat. Inside? Oh yeah. It's a beat. Do you see the reflection oh, of it? Oh shit. Here, let's <laughs> open the doors. <laughs> Ooh, where'd that checklist go? <laughs> oh, oh, damn. oh, I don't do bees. <laughs> uh, I don't want you to eat the song. Of course it falls on you. I know. Wait, I can just step on it now. No more bees in the <laughs> cockpit. Ups are down a little bit. Good on lights. Everything's on. Alright. Oh. And we're good on temp. We'll go full power. And warning you, it's loud. Alright, I'm ready. There's full power. Brakes released. And we'll get the nose wheel off the ground just a little bit. Filling up some airspeed here. Wow, yeah, that climb performance is great. Oh, yeah. It just pops right up out of there. Yeah, I mean, it's much better with uh, no one in here, but. <laughs> and I do left traffic out of here because of his runway. We'll go flaps up. And we'll just do a lap in the pattern, and then we'll take off and go somewhere, just kind of around here. You don't have to climb at full power. This thing, I can pull it back to like 4,700 RPM and still get a good climb. This is usually what I cruise at RPM-wise, so it's still pretty loud. <laughs> I just want to demonstrate a landing real quick, just to, for you to get an idea of what this thing can do landing-wise. So we're really high right now. What's great about this thing, it doesn't really matter how fast you're going true airspeed wise, it'll slow up in a second. I mean, it's very easy to come down, come down fast. 
Uh-huh. So we're really high. I just pull power. We're looking for like 70, and then touchdown is around 55. Okay. And is this in uh, knots or miles per hour? This is miles per hour. Okay. So, kind of slip it in here just a little bit. Kind of love sheet metal rattling everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole, everything about this airplane is loud. <laughs> yes. And we're going really fast, but you'll see in the flare, it just slows up, gets in ground effect, and then we're good. And we're just floating. Oh yeah, slows right on down. And that was a much faster than I wanted to go, but we'll go full power. And it's usually right off the ground. And in this plane, flaps, don't use them. <laughs> Unless you absolutely need to have them. All right, let's try that again. What are we doing right now? <laughs> well, right now we're going to climb to 3,500, and then we'll do some power on stalls, which kind cool. of just demonstrates what the slots can do. It, it doesn't really stall the wing completely. It keeps that airflow over the wing, and uh -huh. you kind of just fall straight out of the sky. It doesn't have any, like, adverse reaction. It kind of just, it just straight falls out of the sky. All right, cool. I'm ready. But, yeah, I mean... She's climbing pretty smooth here at 65. It's not yeah. like it's struggling. Yeah, yeah. And I've been up to 7,500. That's the most I've been in it. But that was on a 110 degree day. So, you know, I was seeing like 9,000 feet density altitude. And you said even on a hot day here, right? Like it's still, you don't really have any issues with climb performance? Yeah, not at all. And, yeah. you know, I haven't had like someone in the right seat with me on a 110 degree day. So I'm right. sure it'll be a little less, but. Right. Really, that, that's my average ground speed. Usually it's around 65 when I'm like in a headwind. Uh -huh. uh, and the fastest I've seen is 120. So, slow plane. But it's, you know, I'm just, you know, this plane is just a build hour. So it's just a, a good, you got a lot of visibility yep. out of it. Yeah, it's great. I, I mean, I love how much you can see around you. You really don't have many blind spots other than right under the nose. Yep, yep. And you'll hear it too, you, when you get in the yellow arc, it, you start feeling the aircraft kind of like taking yeah. on a little bit too much it can handle. Oh yeah. I've had, I flew with someone else in Houston who had the same plane, Dave Telema, and he really showed me what the airframe can handle. Uh -huh. Like he's doing some hammerhead, like uh, just high G, kind of pulling out maneuvers. Uh -huh. uh, it freaked me out. I didn't think the airframe could handle it, but Nine, it's rated for plus six. G's minus four, so uh, that's so, we're at 3,500, okay. we're right around where I usually start this maneuver, um, we're pretty clear on the ADSB, we do have a tower out to our right, so we'll just go full power and uh, see if it stalls, and we'll pitch up, and really you can kind of pitch up, I usually pitch up all the way, as far all right. as back as the stick goes, so. I'll hold my drink. Alright, here we go, full <laughs> power, and you'll need right rudder. Yeah, we're dropping. We've got that stall warning. Uh, oh, there's still a climbing. buffet. Still climbing. And we're just hanging on the prop. Wow, I mean, it's not even losing altitude. It's just sitting here nose high at 35 miles an hour. Yeah, we're kind of into the wind, so it's kind of helping us. There we go, now we're falling a little bit. Oh, there's the brake. There we go, now we're falling a little bit. Oh, there's the brake. There we go, now we're falling a little bit. Oh, there's the brake. There we go, now we're falling a little bit. Oh, there's the brake. Now we're out. Yeah, what's our spin recovery procedure? Nice work. That's the first time I've had this actually break on me. Oh, it brings me back to my CFI days. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Thank you for oh, the yeah. spin entry. <laughs> Get the proper recovery, so I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. We did spin, so that's, that's a plus. <laughs> but it is good to know the stall characteristics of the plane. So yeah, it is something like if I'm bored, I'm going out somewhere, I'm like, yeah, I might as well yeah. do a power on stall, power off stall, yeah. you name it. Oh yeah, it's, it's always good to get to really know the airplane you're flying, you know, whether you own it or you're just training in it, I mean, you should go up and you should really, I mean, know what your limits are, but find those limits, because it's going to make you a better pilot, you're going to be able to handle that airplane better, and you're going to just be more comfortable doing it, too. No doubt. So we'll do slow flight here. Yeah, show me some slow flight. I'm trying to hold the altitude here. Where's the wind coming out of? Do we have any wind? Yeah. Uh, it's light variable. Damn. Light. Damn. I want to go backwards. 
Uh, the slowest I've seen is like 20 miles per hour, but... Yeah, exactly. You could go backwards real yeah. easy with oh, that. Oh, yeah. Kind of turn into the wind here. I know we got that tower off to the right. Ah, that tower's way over there. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm going to try to get it to stall, close to stall speed, which is, I believe, 38 miles per hour indicated with full flaps. And uh, how many degrees deflection are the flaps? I do 40 or less? Uh, it's probably less than that. Okay. And with the with the flapper on, you really don't need it. Uh, right. You know, I, I've used flaps a couple on some landings, but I'm just bumping them down just a little bit. Right. Never really full flaps. If you, if, I guess if you really need that speed descent and to slow you up, you can use full flaps, but I've... Like, you never I, really do. I've never yeah. had to use it. What's really nice in slow flight in this plane is the, the controls are still you know, very stiff. Right. Like you, you, you feel it. You don't. They don't get mushy on you. That is nice. It's interesting, though. I mean, if you, if you're used to training on like a 172, where you're used to those mushy controls, I imagine yes. it probably gets easy to over control. It, yes, 100 percent. Which is like the last thing you want to do in slow flight oh, because yeah. you're already in that slow, vulnerable position. Yes. But don't spin it again. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is about as slow as I want to go in it. Okay. It's over 40. So. Recover, we'll go. Build some air speed up, uh, full power. That was very docile, I mean, very, very it didn't easy. really feel... Yeah, no, it's very controllable. It just felt like, I mean, we're still flying, we were just slow. Yeah, yep. And we'll get our flaps all the way up, there we go. And with the, the Dynon, the avionics here, I can really kind of do everything I want on here. Sometimes I'll have my iPad out for like a cross country, but it's really just... If I can't find it on here, I just go to the go to the iPad. Really, it shows me everything on here. I've got my traffic pattern altitude. I've got all my frequencies. If I want to go somewhere I've already been, it's usually my recent. Sometimes I'll use this to just find the nearest airport, get on their comms, switch it over. Really, you don't need a whole lot in this plane. It's such an easy plane to fly. The only, I would say, the only hard part about flying this plane is just getting the transition from a Cessna. It yeah. does not glide like a Cessna. That's that's most airplanes, though, because most people go and learn at a 172, and they go to anything else, they try to treat it like a 172, and nothing yes. else is like a 172. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. But this is what I usually cruise at, 4,300 RPM. It's probably close to, like, three gallons per hour at 4,300. Wow. Uh, nice. If I want to crank it up to 47, that's when I'm getting closer to that that four and a half, five right. gallons per hour, and I don't have a fuel gauge or like a meter for right. a flow. Um, I've got one that I want to install on it. That way I know exactly what kind of gallons per hour I'm getting. But now here I've just been going off of time, you know, just what I put in the plane. I'm like, right. okay, I use this much this much fuel. I'm getting like average four gallons per hour. How many gallons does it hold total? It holds 15 gallons per side. So oh, we got, wow. Yeah, we got 30 yeah. gallons usable. And I've got That's a lot of range. Nine, it is a lot of range for something five, that, yeah, yeah, gets four gallons nine, per hour, so. That's just nice because you're going so slow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're not covering very many miles in no, that hour, but. Definitely not. I mean, still though, that's nice. I'm sure it's probably a longer range than what you actually want to sit in it for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I do like an hour and a half and I'm ready to get out of this yeah. thing. I need to. It's not too bad. It's not too uncomfortable for, I mean, a lot of these little light sports, they just, I mean, the seats are uncomfortable. Oh, oh no doubt. That's not too bad though. I mean, I think I could do this for an hour and a half. <laughs> My buddy's smart. He's got like the cushions and all that. Yeah. And he was fine throughout the whole flight, so. You know, you think about it, this is probably a little, I think the cabin itself is a little bit bigger than a 152. Oh with yeah, the, there's with, definitely more space here really, than like a 152. With the bubble doors, you, I mean, it really, you have a lot of lateral yeah. Like, movement oh, in yeah. that space. So. It really makes it feel so much more open, yeah. not being pressed up against you. But yeah, no, I think you and I flew the 152 together. I'm pretty sure we were shoulder to shoulder. Okay. We've definitely got some space here, so oh, it's not yeah. bad. It being a short person, I'm more than good. <laughs> Yeah, we can probably head back. Show me your best performance landing. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah, <laughs> show me your best performance landing. All right. My runway is, I haven't put it in the database yet. Right. So I just use my neighbor's runway as like yeah. a go-to. Yeah, I'm sure you're probably pretty familiar with just looking at the ground. Yeah. I do, I'm in the habit of like putting on GPS though. Uh -huh. I, I, just, I like knowing how far away I am. I like knowing how how long it's going to take me to get there. Yeah, I get, well, especially when you have it in front of you, you might as well just, you know, have it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no point in not using what you've got in front of you. That's the perks of modern avionics, you know? You've no got doubt. literally one screen and all the information you could possibly ask for. No doubt. 
And this is usually what I see when I'm like wanting to get somewhere. I'm like 90 miles an hour across the ground. Yeah. And what's your ceiling on this thing? Uh, it is 14,000 feet plus. So, okay. I mean, you, I, mean right. I don't know if it'll actually get to 14,000 feet. That's why yeah. I'm looking at doing the turbo. It is a fun flying plane. I, I, I just love having the visibility of seeing everything yeah. on the ground. Like, Oh yeah, I could see it just being a fun, you know, hobby airplane. Yep. Yeah. And so what I'm doing right now, I'm just going to come down this way so I can do a proper entry into the left downwind for runway 20. All right. All right, we're going slow enough. We can drop some flaps. Uh, and purposely coming in a little high. I want to drop the last, last flaps when we get in there. I gotta say, that must be a nice perk, having a private stream, not having to communicate or deal with anything or worry about people and your pattern. You're just like, nope, we're home. Yep. I do have my neighbor, and he, if he's up, we'll talk on our 1229. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it is really nice to have that. Uh, we're gonna go around. Yeah, so we go around. Sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to go. <laughs> like I always told you, every landing <laughs> is just a go around with the option to touch down. For sure. On a windy, gusty day, I was really scared to fly this plane starting out. Yeah. But it actually handles it very well. I was gonna, uh, how does it handle like turbulence and stuff? Is it pretty stable or are you it, fighting it a lot? It is pretty stable. You do get bumped around a little bit more than like a 152, but it's right, right around the same. You know, uh, and a 172, it handles much better, but a 152, yeah. it's pretty comparable to it. Yeah. I do recommend anybody that wants to get a light sport. I don't know if there's a regulation on it, but you do need to get the transition time with someone that knows the plane very well. Right. Just don't hop in it and go fly it. Oh yeah, I mean, that's smart for any airframe. It you should really never, is. I mean, especially if you're a more inexperienced pilot, you should never just go hop in an airplane you don't know. Yes. You never, I mean, an airplane's an airplane, but you, they're all just a little bit different. They, they are, for sure. We're going to set up for a... All right, I'm going to explain right. this a little bit. Let's get a good one in here. Show me your best performance landing. Oh, man. Pressure's on. It is. <laughs> All right, here we go. Going a little fast, but we'll be fine. We're slower than we were last time. Not that I'm keeping track. Approach. Have it. Hillsboro. Helicopter Foxtrot, Whiskey and Mike X3 uniform. Top speed, number 2176. We're Oh, a little pancake, but it'll do. It'll yeah, do. It sets right down. Nice. Prop traffic. And there we go. There it is. Made it back on the ground. Safe and sound. Safe and sound. Three five. Nice work. All right. Well, awesome. That was yeah. a blast. This is a cute yeah. little airplane. I love it. Yeah, it's a little fun flyer. I could definitely see it being a blast. It just. Around. You know, mess around in, yeah. Yep. Alright, well it was great flying with you again. Thanks for taking me up and showing off the airplane and let's go do it again sometime. Well, it was a great time. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. Thank you Bobby. Thank you Dakota for coming out and hopefully uh, got some good shots of the Xena. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that like and subscribe button and leave us a comment down below. There should be an email popping up right here so if you guys have an airplane you want to show off and go up flying, uh, get it featured here on Flying Doodles, then let us know.